Greetings my friends, how are you doing? This is Zeb from Z Outdoors and I hope you're having an awesome day. So this video is a continuation in a detailed pole lathe series for beginners taught by instructor Peter Wood here at his school called Greenwood Days. Now in the very first video, we had a detailed look at a foundational level in pole lathe. So we looked at the lathe, the tool selection, wood selection, shave horse, and a plethora of other things to give you a good grounding. In the second video, what Peter demonstrated was taking a piece of freshly felled green wood and turning it into a round billet. It's with that round billet, we are now gonna start making some items. Now in this particular video, what Peter is going to be demonstrating to you in detail, step by step, is how to turn a garden dipper. It's very important you refer back to the second video uh, to kind of get to where we are at now. And then obviously with the rest of this video, what we're gonna do is use that round billet to make a finished product. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy the rest of this video. So Mr. Peter Wood, how are you doing? I'm fine, glorious day it's, out in the woods. It's stunning, isn't it? The sun's come out. So in this video, what are you gonna be teaching us in terms of turning? I'm, I'm going to teach you how to turn a garden dibber, something for planting your plants in your garden. It's, it's a simple thing to make, but it does teach you all the four basic tools of the pole lathe. Um, it's a nice thing to start off with. Excellent. So where do we begin then, in terms of turning one like this? Okay. We'll begin with the billet that we, that we prepared, if you'll see the video earlier. That will show you how to get to this point where it's rounded out. Um, this is a bit of cherry. Um, it's a nice thing to turn, gives lovely long shavings, and it's a bit softer than the ash. Um, the dibber that I was showing you was made out of ash. This one's going to be cherry, give you a nice bit of colour, and looks impressive with shavings flying off. That's what we want to do. That's what we want on videos. We want to look impressive. Impressive. Okay. <laughs> so, we're going to do the initial shaping with the big gouge. We use this chisel to rough out to get it down to a cylinder. So, just to reiterate, um, Rest your chisel on the tool rest, hold it with your non-dominant hand. I'm left-handed, so I'm holding the end of the, of the um, handle with my left hand. We want at all times to have a nice low angle. So by that I mean my back hand needs to be as low as possible. Okay, in fact, let, yeah, let, let, let's, let's, let's go straight on. The first thing we want to do is turn a hollow, okay? So we're going to treadle up and down. And we're going to start pushing in and getting a bit of a hollow. But now you can see, I'm starting to dig in. My chisel on that side is digging in that way. And my chisel on that side is digging in that way. So to make it wider and deeper, I start at one side. And I push up and down. And I angle the chisel just slightly. And bring it down. And I always say that's going downhill. That's going from large to small diameter. So we'll bring it back and I'll show you again. We'll start going down. As Soon as you start going back uphill from small to large, it starts digging in. So we turn it round and we come back the opposite direction. And we end up with a nice hollow. I think we'll make it a little bit longer. You don't need to go very fast. See if I start going back up, it starts roughing up, so let's bring it down again. I'll move my finger out of the way, just so you can see. And then we straighten it up, and nice finish. That's the beginnings of the handle. It's quite important that we're doing this section first. Next thing we want to do is round over the end. We'll do a little bit more with the big gouge. We'll start off, and we'll start rounding it down. The problem is with the big gouge, you tend to do a sort of pointy end. So it comes down at a shallow angle. So we want to increase the angle so it rounds down. So to do that, we're gonna put that back in the toolbox and then we're gonna start up with the spindle gouge. Works the same way as the big gouge, but it's just smaller. So we're gonna start at the top. I'm gonna to move my hand out of the way so you can see. And we're gonna start turning and you can see we're gonna make a little groove. So and you can see I'm twisting my spindle gouge round, so I'm rubbing on that bevel and I'm pointing downhill. I'm starting to rough that up, so I'm going to come straight in and I'm going to get rid of that waste. Ok, 
but it's still leaving a bit on there. If I take that off, it flies off. So we're gonna start at the top again. I'm showing you that again. We're gonna curl it around. And then we're gonna bring it in a bit straighter. Take a bit of the waste away. Bring it down a little bit. How much pressure are you applying? I'm putting hardly, the less pressure the better. If you look, I'm, I'm gonna do the next little bit. Let me get the example. So we've rounded over that bit a bit, and now we're going to dip it in and back out again. So I'll show you how much pressure. I'm going to use just my fingertips and a light. And it's so long as your chisels are sharp, I'm putting hardly any pressure on. I'm, I'm sort of pushing just a little bit with the end of my finger, and I'm just lightly going on there. And so long as your chisels are sharp, that's all the pressure you need. But I like to have a bit more pressure just to hold it. So we're going to come down. And remember I was saying, come downhill, then downhill. It's the same with this. If you hit the corner there, then you're going to dig in. So we start one side and round it down. And one side and round it down. Another tip would be, let your treadle go all the way up and all the way down. So you get a nice long travel. That gives you a much smoother effect. What you don't want to do is just little bits like that. Okay, so we've got it to the shape that we want. We now need to smooth it off. So we won't use the spindle gouge for that. We're going to use the skew chisel. I'll show you on that way first and then we'll do the same both ways. We want the point sticking upwards. We want the heel going downwards. We don't want it straight on, we want it at a bit of an angle. Now what people tend to do when they start off with the spindle gouge is they start at too high an angle and so it digs in. I'll show you what I mean here. They start off where they think it's going to cut and they dig in and it pulls across. So you want to bring your hand down nice and low so it's just cutting. Just a light, let's turn it that way. So it's a light little cut. Okay. So we're going to start off here. Low angle. I'm holding relatively tight. I'm starting right up here. So I'm not cutting, but I'm rubbing on the wood. I'm bringing it back until you're just cutting. There we go. And now I'm going to start twisting it around. As I twist it around, I bring my back hand, my left hand, down that way a little bit. So I'm trying to keep just contact with the chisel and the work. And I'm bringing it up and round I go. I'll do this the other way as well so you can see. And so I'm flipping it around and this time I'm coming that way. So if I'm going that way round on the angle, my hand's out here. If I'm going this way round on the curve, my hand's right out here. So let's start again. I'm not cutting, I'm bringing it up until I'm just cutting. And then I'm starting to bring it around. What I'm trying to do is not hit that heel. And the other thing I'm trying to do is not bring the chisel up too high. If I bring the chisel up too high, I lose contact with the bevel and it pulls back. So we start like this. Round we go. And we can go right down into the valley. Okay. And we're going to flip it around again. And we're going to do the same thing. This way, start off with taking just a little cut. Round we go. And then down we come. Now see, I've roughed it up the other way, so I've got to come back in with the heel this way. And there we have the knob at the top. Spindle gouge again. We're going to go straight in. And then we're going to go straight down that way. So I think we're going to try and get it straight down there and curl it round that way. Okay. This is really green, this cherry. It's been cut down about a month or so and I can feel the sap coming up onto my hands. Okay, next thing. Spindle that, uh, the skew chisel again at a slight angle. And I'm going to just start without it cutting. I'm bringing my back hand up until it just starts cutting. There we go. And I'm going to bring it down till we get to the bottom. 
and I'm going to turn it round and spring it round, keeping just a small shaving coming off. Let's get it nice and crisp in there. And there's that bit done. A little bit of um, theory. If you have a look at the down here at the skew chisel, you can see at the moment I'm rubbing on that bevel and I can bring it up until it's just cutting at the cutting edge. If I bring it up too high, I'm not resting on the bevel so it will push across. So you need to keep it down so it's supported by the bevel and you can't push it across. That's why you get it pulling across. If you, I'll show you here. It's just cutting. If I bring my hand up too high, it pulls across. Okay. That's one end of the garden dibber done, completed. So then, we've done this handle first for a very good reason. I can now move the string across. I'm gonna kick the swinging arm on the treadle across. See what I did there? I moved that across. So I've now got the string in line, straight up and down and the string runs around in the handle. If I had tapered it first and put the string on the taper, the string would keep running off the end. So it's quite important to do that end first. So now we need to taper it down. We're gonna use the big gouge again. I could start here at this point and start tapering it down. But as I get deeper and deeper, I start digging in because in fact the chisel is digging uphill. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit off of this end then I'm going to move back and take a little bit more off, move back and take a little bit more off and keep on doing that. So I'm just taking small, a small depth of cut off as I work my way along. As I say, cherry is great for demonstrations and turning because you get these lovely long shavings coming off. And you can see how I'm tapering it, working my way back until I get right back to the end. And you can do this whatever shape you like. And let's bring it a bit of a curve in there and then straighten it along. Don't want to go take too much off there at the moment because then that makes that a bit weak. So there we have the basic shape for our dibber. We could stop there, we could smooth it off, but let's put an extra little bit of pattern on and do another technique with our chisels. So we're gonna go back to the skew chisel and we're gonna use the skew chisel to make a V cut. This is where you have to be very delicate with your skew. Don't push it in very hard. Everybody tries to push in very hard with the skew chisel and that's where you get mistakes happening. So. I'm gonna push up and down, making long strokes with my foot, and I'm gonna bring up the tip, and I'm just going to push it in. Notice, I push the chisel in, and then as my foot comes up, or just before my foot comes up, I take the chisel off. If I leave the chisel on, even for a little bit, it pulls up. Can you see that sap coming out there? Okay, so it's not gonna go any deeper than that, so I've gotta widen the cut so I'm going to move my tip just to one side and just take a little cut off and then take it down and that widens the groove I'm going to angle it the opposite way I'm going to take a little cut can you see that little cut there start bringing it down and I'm going to do the same that way and then we have a nice big groove there you could widen it just come to the end and take another cut off Notice, I'm not taking the chisel down in one go. I'm taking three or four pushes up and down with my foot to get down to the bottom of that groove. Let's put another couple of grooves in there, just so you can see. Go in, angle it to one side, angle it to the opposite side. And we get a nice little groove. Notice what I've done there is I didn't take my chisel off quick enough, so my foot came up 
and then scraped a little bit along there. Now that's okay, because I know I'm gonna get rid of that mark with the flat chisel right at the end. So we've got some marks along there. You could keep on doing marks. You could make as many as you want, but I think three's enough. And finally, we're gonna use the big wide flat chisel. Any wide flat chisel does. Um, the bevel side needs to be down. We need it at an angle. If you go straight on, you're gonna hit the corners and it's gonna dig in like that. So we angle it away from the corners. So we want to be cutting in the middle of the blade. You want a nice low angle. So my back hand needs to be nice and low. What the chisel is gonna to want to do is twist in your hand. So depending on which way you're cutting, and always cut from large to small, so this way we're cutting that way, it's gonna to wanna to twist that way. So I'm gonna use the palm of my hand underneath to resist that, 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 that twisting action. Okay, so I'm gonna push up and down. This high spot is the hardest bit. So you've got to be ever so careful. So I'm just taking a light little cut. And now you can see I'm working in the middle there. And as I push down, I'm moving, a, I'm creating a line, a leading line, and I'm pushing that line forward each time. So my, the action is my chisel cuts and I push it along. I take the chisel off, leave it in the same place. My foot comes up, I put it back on the same place and then move it along a little bit. So I take it off, bring it up, put it back in the same place. So I'm just trying to put that, push that line along. If I go a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, you end up with lines along your work and it's less smooth. So let's just bring it along, bring it along and then carefully Right at the very end, we can bring it down to a little point. That's almost finished. If you want, you can grab a handful of shavings and burnish the wood. So you see how I'm, let's do it with this hand. I'm holding the shavings on there and I'm pushing hard as I push down and releasing a little bit as I push up. That just gives it a bit of a smooth off. Once I've done that, the only thing to do after that is saw that little bit off. You can, you can part it off a little bit more if you want, but I find get it down a certain diameter, but don't take it all the way through and then nip it off with a fine saw. And there we have one cherry garden dibber. So there you go my friends, that is a wrap for this video and an ongoing series on Beginner's Guide to Pole Live taught by instructor Peter Wood. So if you want to be watching the videos that came before and also the videos that are going forward working on more projects, check the links in the description below and that will take you to that series. Also worth mentioning that Peter uh, teaches full time at the Centre of Greenwood Days. He runs a plethora of courses and he does some amazing stuff here. So if you want to find out more details I'll put a link below to Peter's website and please do go check it out. You can find out a lot more information there. What he also does on the website is he mails out uh, quite frequently, updating you on many goings on that he has at events and demonstrations and also here at his centre at Greenwood Days. So when you do visit his website, it will mean the world to me to join his mailing list. Also, Peter is very active on Instagram and Facebook. So he posts up on a daily basis so you can see a lot more of the behind the scenes and also courses that are going on day to day all year round so with those also the instagram and facebook i will link to down below and please do go check that out so hope you enjoyed this video i look forward to seeing you in the continuation of this series and as always i hope whatever you're doing you have a blessed day a blessed week ahead this is zed from zed outdoors peace out